What up, fam? I am Matt Ogus. This is my vlog. You're watching what would be a typical back day, except for two uh, little significant things that I'm going to be talking about in this video. So, as you can see, just the first exercise, pretty plain, um, dumbbell rows. The second exercise, though, is something I got from Alberto Nunez. I saw him doing it with this. He had me try it out, and I really liked it. Um, throw some bands on there for some accommodating resistance on the high row, or I call this diagonal row. Um, only select gyms have this exercise. If you do have it, try it out. Um, I like doing this in uh, the one arm variation um, where I like to uh, place the seat high. And I also like to uh, place the seat real low for uh, some more upper back. Um, and this work I decided to throw on those bands makes me really, really, really squeeze that bitch compared to when I normally do it. I'm kind of just like throwing that weight around when I throw those bands on kind of forced to squeeze and it just totally changes it. I really like it. Uh, the second main point of this vlog that I, uh, yeah, I want your guys' suggestions. What do you think or what do you know is, is up with my body? As you can see, these look like shit. Look at that lower back. You fucking Myron, man. I'm like a gay, I'm like a camel, bro. It looks insane. As I'm feeling myself from the side, uh, I can't help but to think, holy shit, that, that is some serious uh, backgrounding right there. So I tried different uh, foot placements, tried different hip placements, uh, loading the hips, unloading the hips, um, pulling uh, in different uh, directions, pulling towards my toes, pulling in front of my toes, pulling back to my heels, and so on. And uh, no matter what I did, no matter how I flexed my back or tensed it or, or did whatever, um, it, it ended up looking like this. So let me know. What, let, let me. What do you guys think is causing me to? Uh, do the standing cable crunch that way. I'd love to hear you guys' uh, comments below. So I'm doing the math on myself, um, realizing that, okay, I am recovering quite well from this hamstring issue. I, I have noticed that my back rounding during my, during my deadlifts is uh, it's getting less and less every single week. And at the same time, I'm able to get back into ab exercises because for a while I wasn't even able to do uh, hang leg raises and, and cable crunches and so on because of that hamstring issue. Um, so the way I look at it is that you know my core is a little bit underworked. Uh, so you know I'm, I'm imagining that as I get back into doing my ab training uh, more frequently and uh, possibly even try out a little bit of beltless deadlifting. Um, be uh, fixing some issues with uh, some imbalances and weaknesses. So uh, this workout decided to do beltless deadlifts, like I said. So here I'm going for the uh, 435 for five, and I think I want to challenge myself and uh, try to do these 85% max times fives um, without a belt, if possible, every time. Um, this was somewhat subpar conditions, but I still was able to get this for five. Uh, 435 and I noticed that my back looks pretty decent um, even comparing it to last week's 465 for five um, granted the belt kind of creates an illusion of even more backgrounding this looks pretty good I must say so I was happy with uh, how things are, are going with that and uh, looking forward to um, my hamstring being completely healed it is damn near there which is awesome but as you know, I have this, this little uh, knee thing going on. And uh, so this was basically before I decided to drop out the, uh, the front squats. It was after this workout that I really, you know, was like, okay, I'm done. So I went for 225 and I wanted to do beltless again. Uh, just, just, you know, work on that core strength and uh, to not rely on a belt. Um, to do a little bit of, uh, you know, heavy front squats with a belt on other days, but to uh, have days where I just do it without a belt. And uh, my left knee was kind of acting up here. And um, just the typical kind of issue that I've been uh, experiencing with it. Just this kind of uh, like weird kind of sharpness. And like I said, it was probably caused from that one day of, well, probably caused from multiple different things. But um, really that, that front squat kind of incident in that squat rack. So what I did is like, okay, maybe uh, maybe these shoes are making it worse than it is. I took my squat shoes off, so now I'm just barefoot, and I'm thinking, oh, that didn't solve anything. So in fact, it made the exercise even a little bit harder 
and uh, just about the same amount of uh, knee uh, of uh, stress in my left knee. So I put the shoes back on and decided that I was going to do uh, pause squats. So pause front squats. Ended up with three uh, sets. This is the first set of the uh, the five. Uh, first set of five for the pause uh, front squats. And actually, I love this exercise. This, this shit is awesome. Um, I like doing pause squats in general. I really don't know why I don't do them more often because they're fun. Um, put some nice heavy weight on your back or um, up on your shoulders and just pause it at the bottom and really, uh, really work that bottom portion of the lift. So uh, this is just the back view. I wanted to see how it looks. And one thing I kind of have noticed is I'm a little bit forward on my toes on the way down and then I'm coming up on my heels or and then I'm uh, pushing with my heels on the way up. One thing I need to work on is perhaps just uh, just staying more back on my heels on the way down. I, I kind of have noticed that. Um, that's just one of those small things. You, you really, I really recommend filming yourself guys. You can learn so much about your lifts. So that's one thing I noticed about myself. Now we're off to girlfriend's gym. By the way, thanks guys for all the birthday wishes for her. She had a great birthday. And um, yeah, she's 21 now, so. Oh yeah, serious, um, tip for all the beginners. Do not bench with your elbows completely flared. What I'm saying is don't bench with your elbows like out, so far out perpendicular to your body. Um, it's seriously one of the most typical uh, kind of beginner and even intermediate bench like that. I don't know what they're asking for. That's for fucked up shoulders, to be honest. So as a beginner, um, you don't have to quite tuck the elbows close to the body, as close to the body as me, but you definitely don't want them out perpendicular to the body unless uh, you really don't care about the health of your shoulders because they will be destroyed sooner or later. I hit 295 that didn't even get filmed because I fucked up for four or practically five reps. Uh, we weren't sure if uh, like I was getting the last rep up and uh, my girlfriend decided to pull it. But uh, I just counted it as uh, 295 for four. Dropped it down to uh, right here, I got 280 and did uh, three sets of four. So I ended up with four sets of four for this bench workout. Uh, usually it seems like I end up with four sets of four or three sets of five or five sets of three when it comes to uh, my benches or my overhead presses. That's just usually what I like ending up with. Vlogs are back guys. Going to the zoo with the girlfriend and the niece in the back. Starting the day off with Chipotle. Of course, of course. So, uh, see you guys at the zoo. Chipotle and Disney music. That last bite, it hurts. So what does Matt Ogus do for fun? He rides on trains. There's the conductor. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? That BBC though must hide the gains. Hi coyote! That is a big bear. Oh look it's pooping! Look! So close to the deer. Hey buddy. We got a bodybuilding show going on on top of the roof. Hi guys. Hey guys, look who it is. Mateo back in the house. What's Hey quit being a little bitch! Ogus cake!